antenna uh, let me change the pointer so this is the some photographs of our university jawaharlal nehru university a very beautiful campus is over here lots of animals and birds you can see here and if i talk about the ranking of the jnu it is the top ranked university among all the central universities and uh, in the university category it is on the second rank after iisc bangalore and if we will talk about the overall ranking it's on eighth place after the iisc bangalore and six iits means it is above to all other iits in overall ranking according to the nirf ranking 2020 so let's move towards the content so today we are going to discuss uh, briefly in the, about the microstrip antennas and then we will discuss what is the defected ground structure and then we will discuss the differentiation of dgs with the pbg and ebg structures how it is different from these two similar type of structures then what is the mechanism of the dgs how dgs act and uh, what is the physics behind the dgs and the equivalent circuit then we will discuss what is the equivalent circuit of the dgs how it can be combined with the other structures like uh, micro strip line or like the other antenna parts and then we will discuss few applications of the dgs like filter response cross polarization suppression bandwidth enhancement mutual coupling suppression multi band performance so let's move so antenna if uh, we want to define the antenna i think all of you must be aware about the antenna it is usually a transducer which used to transmit the signal and receive the signal so basically at the transmitter and it converts the electrical energy into em energy and at the receiver end elect electromagnetic energy into the electrical signal so that is the basic concept of the antenna so uh, what is the micro strip patch antenna so micro strip patch antenna is a uh, advanced version or planar form of the antenna so in the micro strip patch antenna there is a some conducting patch and a conducting ground which is separated by a dielectric substrate so this is the basic concept uh, behind the micro strip patch antenna so it is evolved nearly about in the 1970s then lots of research were carried out in the field of micro strip antenna so and defected ground structure is one of them it is something evolved in near 2000 and then it is uh, even under uh, the research uh, and it is uh, under the concentration of the many of the researchers and many of the researchers are using the defected ground structures A lot of structures are they are using ground uh, defected ground structure so we are going to discuss what is the phenomena what is the mechanism how dgs works so defected ground structure simply in this figure you can see this is the regular ground plane in the case of micro strip patch antenna in the case of micro strip line there is a regular ground plane means you can see there is no defect and regular ground plane is there and this is the pro feed sma connector is connected over here then what is the defected ground structure slots or defects integrated on the ground plane means if we are fabricating or embedding few defects on the ground plane you are seeing in this structure this is the dgs defected ground structure in this structure two semi arc semi arc are made as defect this is the dgs okay so in dgs we are just simply embedding few slots on the ground then similar structures what are the dgs and how it is evolved so first pbg was came into picture what is the pbg pbg is photonic band gap photonic band gap crystal so in this photonic band gap we are just making the defective dielectric means our substrate we are making the our substrate defective means you you can see this is the 3d structures and this is the 2d 2d structures in 2d structure the figure is more clear means suppose there were a substrate regular substrate was there and we are making just hole via these type of via and one more thing about the pbg it should be periodic it should be periodic it is also known as a periodic dielectric crystal so 
we are making the making the periodic defects over here so that would be considered as the 2d uh, pbg structures and in the similar manner if we are making the defects in the 3d means in the x x direction in the y direction and also in the z direction so this is the 3d structures but but if we will talk about the 1d structures uh, that is the concept of the micro strip agentina because uh, this is the planar structure so in this uh, structure you can see in the pbg structures we are stacking several type of dielectrics over here several type of dielectrics are stacked over here to make a pbg and what is going on in the pbg structure pbg structures is just basically we are putting a larger size of defects in the pbg and it have the quality to bending the electromagnetic wave bending the electromagnetic wave and it is just you can relate it by the phenomena of the photon like uh, as the photons behaves then your electromagnetic wave behaves like the photon after embedding the pbg structures in your micro strip structures so these structures 3d and 2d structures was the 3d was not surely related to the micro strip structures but somehow 2d can be adopted in the micro strip technology then 1d is adopted in the micro strip technology if we are making them to pbg okay so how we can use the pbg structures in our micro strip technology so you can see here in the first figure line defects and bending of em waves so there are lots of defects are over here and you can see there is a gap larger gap is over here if you will compare this gap from this gap this one is the larger gap and your em wave is bending like this so you are able to bend your wave according to your requirement okay and this one second figure is related to the 1d pbg structures you are putting the several dielectrics stacked okay you are putting the several stacked dielectrics over here with the patch antenna and you are making the pbg in the similar manner secondly the third figure you can see periodic drilled holes with patch means this is your patch antenna and you are putting several holes through the dielectric so that would be a via via is a hole means uh, via uh, via is a simple hole okay so and this is the periodic drilled holes with the ml micro strip line this is the micro strip line that would be supported by a regular ground plane regular regular ground plane would be on the another surface okay and we are making the drilled hole via we are making the via in a periodic manner so these are some examples of the periodic structure but in the last one these circular holes are represented by the dotted line means these are not the holes these are the edged structures on the ground plane means we are making a circular defects on the ground plane which are underneath this micro strip line and substrate that would be on the second phase the second phase of that substrate okay on the upper surface this micro strip line is here and on the lower surface uh, there would be a ground plane and we are making a several periodic defects circular defects over here okay so that is few examples of the pbg now let's move towards the ebg structures so ebg structures is the electromagnetic band gap pbg was for the photonic band gap so in the ebg structures it is also the periodic structures like the ebg like the pbg structures so we are placing several uh, periodic structures with the main patch antenna this is the patch antenna and again we are placing number of ebg structures over here and similar to the previous one the similar structure we have discussed in the pbg also so the question should came in your my, mind what should be the difference between ebg and pbg if we will look around this slide this is for pbg and we are making the uh, circular defects on the ground plane and we are saying this is the pbg and in this slide we are just making the same structures underneath the micro strip line and we are saying it is ebg so the question should came into your mind there should be some difference between ebg and pbg so we will discuss what is the difference between pbg and ebg and what is uh, how these two are different from the defected ground structures so okay so in the second example uh, here are the two uh, 
microstip patch antennas and we are placing ebg structures and it may be used for suppressing the mutual coupling between both of them it it, it is the example of mimo multiple input and multiple output structure okay and then again this one structure is further established like this means in this structure we are making the pouch fractal shape are used in the same manner fractal shape are used as the ebg structure so you will have to design the unit cell and then you will have to design the array of that uh, ebg structures the main thing it should also be periodic pbg was also periodic and ebg is also period so the basic difference what is the pbg and ebg so i think all of you must be aware about this diagram so i do not need to describe it in detail but i can say this is the electromagnetic band gap between the valence band and conduction band so left side is the phenomena which is happening in the case of ebg and the right side here you can see the photonic band gap the uh, photonic energy h nu and this is the phenomena which is happening in the case of pbg structures photonic band gap okay so here in the case of photonic band gap photonic dispersion is here and in the case of uh, ebg structures electronic dispersion is here so what would be the basic difference how pbg and ebg are differentiated how we can differentiate pbg ebg with the dgs so these are some differences so in pbg and ebg pbg and ebg both are periodic structures and in dgs simply we are putting the single or few compact geometries on the ground and these two are the periodic structures but what is the difference between both two this one is the larger size and this one is the smaller than the pbg and larger than the dgs okay so this is the main difference in the ebg structures the slot size would be smaller the difference between two slots would be smaller and in the case of pbg the slot size would be larger and the slot difference would be also larger so this is the basic difference between pbg and dbg structures and these are evolved all three structures were evolved in the same manner first pbg was evolved then ebg was uh, came into the pictures now dgs is being used so in dgs simply we are putting few structures single or double or triple uh, slots may be there okay and these dgs won't be periodic okay so if we talk about the fabrication techniques definitely it would be difficult if we are placing the several number of defects or if we have to make the drills and uh, holes uh, as we have discussed in the case of 2d structures and if we have to stack several dielectrics then it is also a difficult task to achieve so uh, the fabrication of pbg is somehow difficult in the similar case we have to analyze the ebg structures in a periodic sense and we have to put lot of uh, structures over there so it is also difficult so its parameter extraction is also difficult its uh, ebg parameter extraction is also difficult and the fabrication and parameter extraction for the dgs is simpler in comparison to the pbg and ebg structure so this is the basic difference uh, between pbg ebg and dgs so let's move towards the dgs we are going to discuss about the dgs i think uh, it should be much clear to you what is the difference between pbg ebg and dgs so let's talk about the mechanism of the dgs so uh, this is the example of slot antenna most of you are aware about the slot antenna then uh, what we are uh, doing a slot this is a conducting sheet this is a conducting sheet and we are just making a slot of lambda by 2 distance okay so according to the babinet principle a slot antenna can be considered as a complementary dipole antenna. So if we are having a dipole antenna of similar dimensions the characteristics of this complementary dipole antenna and the characteristic of this slot antenna would be same okay so we can say a uh, dgs will work on the babinet principle of the complement sorry if we are making a 
plot over there it may also resonate so what is happening if we are making a slot over there suppose we have made a slot over here so what is happening uh, this would be the edge of the copper this one is the one edge and this one is the secondary edge so there would be a capacitance a capacitance would be there and uh, so uh, a, a capacitance would be there and secondly we can assume this is a conducting sheet and we can assume this conducting sheet as it is made of with the infinite number of turns as if we are talking about the inductors what is the inductor inductor coil inductor coil has some n number of turns over there and suppose if we are suppressing the distance between the turns and we are uh, the, their separation distance between two turns is tends to zero then we can assume this seat as it have number of infinite turns over there so if we are placing this conductor and this conductor and there would be a separation then a uh, mutual inductance would be developed over there so we can assume if we are making a defect on a conducting sheet there would be a lc circuit lc circuit would be there so a uh, inductance would be developed there a capacitance would be developed there and we know this lc is responsible for a resonance all of us are teachers most of us are teachers or researchers so we know lc is representing a resonance so this slot uh, will start to resonate over a frequency and that frequency would be related to lambda by 2 suppose uh, uh, that frequency will be related to the dimensions of the dgs and suppose in that case it is lambda by 2 means lambda is equal to c by r so we can make a defect according to our choice of interest of frequency so that's it that is the basic phenomena how dgs work so we are taking just an example of micro strip line so suppose in first case we are taking a micro strip line we are just taking a micro strip line and there is no defect suppose okay so what would be the response of that micro strip line if we will talk about the s11 that would be something like this s11 means suppose this one is the port 1 and this one is the port 2 so the power which is reflecting back and we are providing the power from this port this is the input port so s11 would be how much power is coming back return loss would be coming there so s11 is uh, in the case of regular ground plane no defect is there s11 would be like this means the return loss power reflecting power is minimum and what would be the s12 uh, micro strip line is an example of transmission line so maximum power will go in that direction from port 1 to port 2 so the s12 or s21 would be like this near to 0 db it won't cross the 0 db okay so but after embedding this slot this is the dumbbell shape slot okay this is the square this one is a square and it is connected with a smaller strip okay and uh, we have placed this uh, dumbbell shaped on the ground plane ground plane would be here on the another surface of the dielectric substrate so what is happening there uh, lc will be added over uh, here and that according to that lc circuit which we have discussed in previous slide uh, this dgs will start to resonate over a frequency then after resonating what will happen this s12 you can see here s12 or s21 would be similar so this s21 is like this and this s11 which was like this previously it is starting like this means at the resonant frequency you are achieving a notch band over here you are achieving a notch band at this frequency and uh, in the mm, case of dgs the location of the defective ground structure is very crucial so you have to find the proper location where uh, it should be situated there are two methods one method is you you should calculate the distance uh, according to the mathematical calculations how we can get uh, how uh, where we should place our structure so it should be placed on the multiples of lambda by 2 or lambda by 4 uh, and uh, second place you can 
vary the position uh, in your simulator like if you are uh, working on the hfss tht whichever software you are using you can vary the position and you have to find a particular uh, location so uh, who are new to the field of dgs suppose we are having a microstrip line like this and we are placing this dumbbell slot here so it won't work suppose if you are placing this dumbbell slot here so it may be possible you are not uh, you will not receive such amount of notch band such amount of power okay so you have to find out the location okay so that is the mechanism of the dgs i think all of you are known to this now so these are the uh, type of dumbbell set in this uh, pattern we are placing the dumbbell set slot uh, in the horizontal fashion this would be a horizontally placed uh, dgs structure and this is the micro strip line and we are placing the dumb, dumbbell shaped slot horizontally and in this we are placing the vertical slots so this is the vertical periodic structures uh, we, uh, this is these are the examples where we can also use our dgs as a periodic structure few, few papers are also there so you can also you can also use your dgs as a periodic structure okay so uh, as uh, if we talk about the advantage of the patch entity the major advantage with the patch antenna we are free to choose any shape of patch and same thing is applied to the case of dgs we are free to use several shape of dgs so these are some popular shape of dgs which have been used at a very large scale so in most of them you will see dumbbell shape dgs are being used this is the square dumbbell circular dumbbell triangular dumbbell this is h shaped dumbbell shape this is again fractal shaped dumbbell dumbbell shape and this again you know, like srr or some spiral shape dumbbell is also there so you can put the srr as a dgs you can concentric rings you can put and uh, this is also the dumbbell shape this is the some modified version of dumbbell shape so most of the figures have been used at a large scale so and second thing you are free to use your own shape you can design but it should be technically fit you have to justify the technical reasons why you are receiving that signal why you are receiving that notch this is the mandrand line okay so most of them are used to achieve the uh, filter response and many of them can be used in the antennas also so what should be the equivalent circuit model of the dgs if we talk about the circuit equivalent circuit model one of them i have discussed with you lc equivalent circuit so in uh, most of the papers lc circuit is uh, used uh, for the equivalent circuit model so that is that is the z naught which is representing the circuit of the uh, previous structure like you can say that not would be the transmission line characteristic impedance and again this is the transmission line capacitance or oh, uh, impedance and then we are just adding the lc circuit over there but some other concept is also there rlc we are also putting the resistance r with the lc circuit and we take the y parameter okay g and b is also there uh, conductance and susceptance okay so we are just placing this this block is representing the uh, equivalent circuit model of the DGS and we are just placing it with the another structure so this is also a question how we can place our DGS equivalent circuit with the uh, how we can embed this DGS structure circuit with the other part of the antenna or part of the micro strip line so uh, there are two popular methods number one is the pi shaped equivalent circuit suppose uh, this is this is the structure uh, in which we have placed a uh, dumbbell shape underneath the micro strip line so uh, micro strip line is represented by this tank circuit r and cp is also there and this theta one is representing the electrical length electrical length is also in terms of the lambda okay so after this particular length this 
DGS is placed over here. So in this particular paper, RLC pattern is used for the DGS. And this is the second portion which is left uh, after the DGS. So again, that portion and that portion would be same. And we are calculating the total equivalent circuit according to the Y pair. Okay. This is the one approach. Uh, as per the single, uh, second approach, we are using the ideal transformer to connect the DGS. This is the more accurate, uh, more accurate phenomena uh, because DGS is on the ground plane. DGS is on the ground plane. It is uh, when it is connected with the uh, structure which is on the upper half, upper plane, upper face of the substrate. It should be connected something like this. Means we are placing the ideal transformer. This is the Z slot. This is the equivalent circuit of a defected ground structure. So we can say this Z slot can be represented by this RLC or LC. And this is the structure which is which you are having on the upper surface of the substrate. Okay. So again, this is the tank circuit of the micro strip line representing if you are you are going to solve the uh, transmission line model, then you can find these values. Okay. So in this resistor and inductor is connected in the series and conductance and capacitance is connected in the parallel and this l1 and l2 is also mentioned so it is also able to find the distance after how much distance your dgs is being placed and the latter part of the distance okay so and uh, one question should came into your mind why we are using the ideal transform ideal transformer ideal transformer is using because we do not want to add any loss due to the transform okay we are using a lossless transformer in the theoretical analysis okay this is the theoretical analysis so we can use the ideal transformer in practical there is no lossless transformer is there so in the theoretical analysis we should we can use the uh, ideal things so we are using and this ideal transformer for considering the lossless transform okay so this is these are the two phenomena uh, by which we can integrate our dgs circuit into the total equivalent circuit total equivalent circuit means the equivalent circuit which you have on the uh, surface uh, upper surface also upper surface of the substrate so now let's move towards the applications of the dgs what are the different applications of the DGS if we will see the different applications we can use DGS in filter response cross polarization suppression is the big achievement we can suppress the cross polarization with the DGS and it is vastly used to suppress the cross polarization we will also discuss what is the cross polarization exactly DGS is also being used for the bandwidth enhancement mutual coupling suppression multiband performance size reduction and circular polarization all the things uh, mentioned here can be achieved through the dgs performance okay so first we will look for the filter response what is filter response so i think we have discussed this thing already how we are achieving the filter response we have the micro strip line which is used as the transmission line and if we are having a regular ground plane we will have just transmitted signal from one port to another port and if we are putting uh, DGS over here, we are just getting a filter response, no band. Okay. So, we have already discussed this thing. So, cross polarization suppression. So, first of all, uh, we should learn what is the polarization and what is the cross polarization. So, uh, first of all, uh, we will see what is the uh, linear polarization. Suppose if we are looking uh, polarization, first of all, we should. Uh, define the polarization so uh, when we are considering the orientation of electric field component while defining the polarization we should consider the orientation of electric field components on no magnetic field will be considered while defining the polarization okay polarization is only defined with the e field component so in this case you can see electric field component on the horizontal plane so that would be the horizontally linearly polarized wave okay this is the example of planar wave and in this case you will see 
the e field is on the vertical plane so that would be the vertically linearly polarized wave okay this one is the horizontally linearly polarized wave and this one is the vertically linearly polarized wave these are the planar waves and these are the ideal waves in the practical scenario ideal waves are not formed usually okay uh, so these are the ideal case so uh, in both two cases in this one a electric field component is on the horizontal plane in this case electric field component is on the vertical case but it is also a possible case of the uh, planar waves planar waves in that case the total electric field is at a angle is at a angle like this you can visualize it through it okay so this is the total electric field so what we are uh, doing so we will take a uh, we will decompose this total electric field in the vertical component and in the horizontal component we will take the uh, projection projection of this total electric field wave on the vertical plane as well as on the horizontal plane so you can see at each instant of time but if we will see the ver vertical wave we can see here this one is the vertical projected wave and this one is the horizontally polarized projected wave okay so we have to we have decomposed the total electric field into horizontal vector and vertical vector so this is the uh, animation you can visualize the blue one is the tilted total electric field and at every instant we have decomposed and or we can say we have take the projection into the vertical and horizontal plane so red one is the vertical one and green one is the horizontal one so you can see how the total electric field can be projected in two major planes e field and h field we can say e field or h field okay e plane or h plane so now we will discuss what is the cross polarization so if we are looking this is the total electric field okay which we are discussing and this is our e plane and this is our h plane okay let it is uh, it have some angle with the e plane okay so what we will do we will decompose we will take the projection on both the plane so if we have a smaller angle or means it should be on this plane this e field should be placed vertically on this plane but it have some angle let theta theta angle is there so the projection on this axis e plane axis would considered as the copolar cp and the projection on another orthogonal plane would be as the x so uh, suppose if uh, this this is the case of the uh, vertical um, vertical linear polarization so if we will discuss about the case of horizontal linear polarization so our electric field component is like this and ideally it should be on this plane h plane but it have some angle with the horizontal plane so now what we will do we will again take the projection we will again decompose the factors so on the major axis it will have the cp copolar over here and on the orthogonal plane that would be the x so in that case that should be the cp and in that case that would be the cp and another factor orthogonal uh, e field vectors would consider as the xp so i think uh, that is sufficient to understand the concept of cross polarization so how cross polarization can be suppressed through the dgs structure so you can see this is the simple circular patch antenna circular patch antenna and these plots you can see here uh, a circular slot is over here that is embedded on the ground plane okay and this is the view from the top and uh, we are looking the edge first and this is the bottom view we are looking the ground plane okay so these are the two defects on the ground plane and now dotted line is representing the uh, circular patch antenna on the opposite surface okay so if we will look the results that is the e plane and that is the h plane okay so 
if we will look at the results then this one is the cross polarization result without dgs conventional patch antenna and it is nearly about uh, minus 18 db okay but after embedding the defected ground structures we have we have received the suppressed cross polarization level and below minus 20 db okay and in the similar manner in the h plane without dgs this solid lines representing the cross polarization level and uh, this dotted line representing the cross polarization level with dg okay so you can see that the cross polarization is suppressed we can visualize it through the current distribution functions also in this figure current uh, vectors are uh, shown here so this is the figure which is referring without dgs so you can see there are lots of orthogonal resonances over here orthogonal resonances are shown here but after embedding the dgs the orthogonal uh, resonances are suppressed so cross polarization level are suppressed so these these results are justified in the same way okay so uh, cross polarization i have covered so now let's move towards the bandwidth enhancement with dgs so uh, in our previous stc i had also a lecture so i had discussed how we can uh, enhance the bandwidth through dgs so let me discuss it in a single minute so suppose this is a conventional patch antenna and this is the center and this is the feeding location we, we can calculate the feeding location and uh, we can calculate the radius we can calculate the radius of the patch for a particular for a particular uh, frequency so these by these frequencies by this formula we can use we can use the we can calculate the radius so suppose we are calculating the radius for the 10 gigahertz frequency then this radius is calculated and what we are doing we are making a slot on the ground plane with the same radius we have calculated it through this formula and if we are not making the ground plane defected ground structures it will resonate uh, uh, for a narrow band and if we are making this aperture aperture on the ground like this and this point is coinciding the feeding location is coinciding with the end point of the micro strip line so this will give you this will give you the wide band this will give you the wide band and starting from the 10 gigahertz that would be the designing frequency so that that is the case which i have discussed in earlier stc also so i am not going to in detail very much detail so uh, without dgs you are receiving such type of response at 10 gigahertz and with dgs with the same dimensions you are receiving such type of wide band response so uh, you can see dgs is also can be used for getting the bandwidth enhancement so okay how we can use uh, how we can achieve the uwb performance uh, after the after using the dgs okay so uwb all of you are aware about the uwb band that is from the 3.1 gigahertz to 10.6 gigahertz and uh, there are few constraints while we are uh, working on the uwb band stable gains should be there from the range and there should be some notch bands uh, for the reason so how we can utilize our dgs how we can achieve the uh, uwb performance through dgs so that is the semi ground plane semi ground plane is in this shape okay Th that is our monopole microstrip monopole structure is over here and we are using a semi ground plane over here so if you will use the semi ground plane then you will start to get a uwb performance ultra wideband performance would be there so and to get the response from the 3.1 gigahertz to 10.6 gigahertz you will have to make some arrangement on your patch but by using such type of defected ground structure you can achieve the ultra wideband performance through monopole okay this is a tested technology and it have been implemented more than 5000 people okay so uh, this is the another further refinement would be there through the dgs some triangular shape and some square shaped slots were there to refine the characteristics of 
uwb pati particular antenna so cpw uwb antenna and how we can use the cpw uh, dgs in cpw so uh, all of you are aware about the cpw construction this is the substrate and in cpw in the case of cpw this is the feed line and we have two ground plane over here one is here and one is here in this structure till that point is the cpw feed okay till that point uh, transmission line is there and antenna structure is starting from here okay so this is the structure this structure this extended cpw can be referred as the defected ground structure okay cpw is the another method another method to achieve the uwb uh, response okay so by this you are using the dgs in cpw technology so you can also use the dgs in cpw technology you can also make several defects over here in the in the ground planes of the cpw okay so this is the response of that particular antenna mutual coupling suppression using dgs this is one more advantage of the dgs so suppose we have dual feed structure like when this one is here and this one is here and there is the circular slot on the ground plane okay and that is the response of this structure and you can see the amount of h21 h21 is representing the level of mutual coupling and here you can see mutual coupling is going above the minus 10 db ohms okay because you can see the distance between both the feeds is very small so there would be a definite thing there would be a definite mutual coupling over there so in that case we have used two arc shaped dgs over there and you can see what is the level of mutual coupling it has been suppressed i think more than 20 db by using the defected ground structure so you can see what is the phenomena of defected ground structure how it works it majorly used to suppress the mutual coupling and suppress the cross polarization it is majorly used to do okay multiband using dgs so uh, this is one more structure you can see this is the final structure this is the upper shape and this is the ground shape bottom view and top view and in this structure if you will see this is the evolutionary step so if you will see this this one second one is the similar structures like the final structure but it have a regular ground plane and this is first one is the final proposed structures like this first one is the final structure and this one is the first step but in the regular ground plane so we can compare these both two and these are the evolutionary evolutionary between steps okay and these are the steps structures okay so if we will compare this one and two so we will look this one is the proposed structure solid lines final structure with the dgs and second one second one is something here okay so you can see no resonance is there so these all resonance are due to the defected ground structure so that is the power of defected ground structure you can achieve several desired results through the dgs okay and in this particular case three bands are achieved using dgs okay this is the another example of multiband structures in this structure a triangular uh, patch is used and uh, shifted offset feed is being used through the inset feed method okay then again srr and uh, dslr is used for getting the few bands and then there is two dipole is attached here one dipole is here but the second part this is the half dipole the second part is on the ground plane this is the ground step okay and in the same manner this is the half dipole and the second part of the dipole is here okay so dgs is also being used to make the dipoles in the planar structures in the microstrip technology and this dgs is responsible for the two band in this system so you can see how we can use the dgs to achieve the multi-band structures okay so these are few design antennas which we have made in our lab so you can discuss your queries now we can take questions these are some references thank you uh
this is my email id you can contact me last time several uh, participants have contacted me and lots of queries i had received and i have a uh, few few are remaining i have still to answer few queries of the previous from the previous stcs okay so you can ask the queries so thank you dr mukesh for a very informative session thank you very much so you have uh, really explained dgs in a very uh, systematic way so i think most of the doubts of the 